Good morning, and welcome to the Cathedral of St. Matthew the Apostle. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Assumption. We ask that you please continue to use your mask to cover your mouth and nose for the entire Mass, except when consuming the communion host. We encourage you to join in the spoken and sung responses and hymns for the Mass. Today's music leaflet can be found on the homepage of the Cathedral website, which can be accessed on your phone or mobile device. You may also use the QR codes posted at the entrances to the Cathedral to download the leaflet. You may also pick up a printed program at the entrances. We ask that you return them after Mass or take them home. Leading us in our celebration today is Cardinal Wilton Gregory, Archbishop of Washington. Let us rise as we begin this Liturgy of the Eucharist. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, we join the Church Universal on this Sunday as we pause to honor the Mother of God, who in the special gift of the Father has been taken body and soul into heaven. Let us ask that same Father to grant us pardon of our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Almighty ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, mother of your Son, body and soul into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be shares, sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. 
a great sign appeared in the sky. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, 
the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each in proper order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he subjugated, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe, that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. 
from this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dearest brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus. I must confess that I love these wonderful days of summer in spite of their obvious intense heat and humidity. They are, after all, very special moments for most of us as we enjoy the unique grandeur of this time of year. August is very different from springtime because we now enjoy many of the flowers and much of the produce that springtime had only suggested would eventually come to fulfillment. Many of you who may be urban farmers are now harvesting homegrown tomatoes and fruits and vegetables that you planted only a few months ago. The flowers that are currently in full bloom, even with our continuing regional hot weather, are a sign and a blessed benefit of this special time of year. August is a month when people are reaping the bounty of the hard work that they had begun during the springtime. It might, therefore, be the perfect moment to celebrate the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary because she is that special first harvest of the grace of Jesus' redemptive triumph. In fact, the assumption is a celebration of all that God has achieved in Christ that is now initially shared in its fullness with the mother of the word made flesh. Many people outside of our Catholic Church might well misunderstand why we honor Mary with this unique title and with this particular solemn feast. They mistakenly might believe that we are excessive in our tribute to the Blessed Mother. Yet in truth, as St. Paul reminds us, in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Mary was the first in line to share fully in the triumph that Christ has over death. Her assumption is an echo of the resurrection in which all of us are destined eventually to share. We honor her today because she is the first to realize 
the glory that Christ's resurrection has promised will come to all of us. The assumption is consequently a celebration of hope that we too will be raised to the new life that she now shares perfectly with her son. The solemnity of the assumption invites the church to reflect on the glory that the Lord has in store for all of us, even as she is the first to receive the realization of that promise. The Assumption is actually an Easter feast that was planted in the springtime, but only reaches maturity during August's warm warmth and August's August, August, August's warmth and joy. The Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary is really a reminder that Easter is always a long drawn out celebration that only begins at the tomb and then extends to every moment of creation, opening with the Blessed Virgin Mary being taken body and soul into heaven. She who said yes to everything that God asked of her is now joined with her son in glory, where she awaits all of us in time. Mary is an August harvest that points to its fulfillment when creation has finished its growth and its development. August is a time of warmth. It is a time of harvest. It is a time of hope. And Mary, in her assumption, is its crowning jewel. Each Sunday, the church throughout the world offers a prayer of faith, uniting us to one another as we offer now the creed. I believe in one God, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, we proclaim the greatness of the Lord, who has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. With confidence in that mercy, we place our prayers 
in God's hands. For all those who minister in the church, that they may be given a spirit of humility and fidelity, modeled after Mary, the first disciple. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Afghanistan, Lebanon, the Philippines, Hong Kong, Myanmar, and Ethiopia, and all nations experiencing political turmoil, and for the victims of the recent earthquake and extreme weather in Haiti. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to this pandemic, for those who are struggling with the financial and food insecurity that it has caused, and for the success of efforts to protect vulnerable populations from further spread of infection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For students, parents, and teachers facing an uncertain future, and for a sense of urgency in the pursuit of solutions to stem the tide of a warming planet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, as it attempts to heal the wounds of racial and economic inequities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and all those who have asked for our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially the victims of gun violence, those who have died from complications of the coronavirus, and for all those who are grieving their loss. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Compassionate Father, Hear the pleas we have presented to you. Make us, like Mary, instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let there be love. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, both now and forever.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with Matthew and the other blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be careers to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge each other in the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
For those receiving communion, please wait for the direction of a guide before leaving your pew. While you are still six feet away, the minister will say the body of Christ, to which you respond amen while keeping your mask in place. Then approach the minister and extend your hands to receive the host. During this pandemic, we ask that you please consider taking the Eucharist in the hand only and not on the tongue.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>